Hello everyone and welcome to Operation Deep Freeze. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway and we're gearing up for the final season of Year 8 of Rainbow Six Siege. To get us started, Creative Director Alexander Carpazas is here with an overview of the season and some roadmap updates. Hello everyone and welcome to Operation Deep Freeze. The entire Siege team is really proud of the work that we're about to show you today. Before that, we have some updates on the roadmap that we want to communicate to you. One of the big changes is the shield rework that we talked about earlier in the year. We want to give it a bit more time before we can finally put on the polish that it deserves, which means that we'll be pushing it into Year 9 Season 1. However, we want to show you these changes this season. So expect a test server to go live where you can check out all of the work in progress changes we're bringing to Shields. And you'll also have the ability to give us feedback on these changes before they go into the next season. On top of all of this, we have a new operator, Tuberau, who's coming to the game, joining Wolfguard and hailing from Portugal. He has a new ability that's quite frosty and brings a new element to other gadgets in the game. We have a new map as well, the Lair, which is Deimos' HQ for all of his nefarious deeds. There is much, much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg when we talk about Operation Deep Freeze. You may have seen the teaser trailer for the new season's map, but now it's time for the full tour. We're jetting off to Demos's secret headquarters, where Assistant Director of Level Design, Mahdi Tayab, will be your guide. So Lair is coming to Season 4. Lair is a huge military facility inside of a giant cave, and it helped us uh, design different type of gameplay. For example, one of the spawn points, the shooting range, leads directly to the top floor since its elevation is at the same point. Uh, so this is one of the cool features of the map. Since it's a cave, you can imagine there's lots of different tunnels, there's lots of access, and these spawns are also very safe. So if we look floor by floor and let's start uh, with the basement, you can imagine it's very damp, dirty. They work with dangerous chemicals. On this floor, we have one objective, lab and lab support. What's interesting is that the lab is right at the center of the layout. So most paths will inevitably rejoin into the objective. So from round to round, you can use different type of strategies and you'll always find something new. The first floor in contrast with the basement is a lot cleaner, it's a lot brighter. On this floor, we have two objectives. One of the objective is the bunk and briefing room. Interesting thing is that players on defense will have to watch out for the reachable external wall, but we made sure to give enough covers on both ends to make sure that the defenders have enough flanking path. If we go on the other side of the floor, we have armory and weapon maintenance. And from there, players on attack can use the shooting range to get into the objective. Let's talk about the second floor. Also very different compared to basement and first floor. It has a more refined look. We have an objective there, which is office and R6 investigation room. Outside of it, there's a mezzanine that attackers can use. And there's entries right into the objectives. But they have to watch out because defenders also have vintage point into the mezzanine. So what excites me the most about this map is there is lots of way to uh, attack, defend, and lots of different ways to strategize all of it. Lair won't be bannable for Operation Deep Freeze, and we hope you enjoy the map. Operation Deep Freeze will mark the full launch of the reputation system, complete with new UI and a grace period during which the team will continue to monitor the system. For more details on this new phase, let's hear from UX designer Roland Poe. With the launch of the commendation system last season, we've been really happy to see how everyone's been using it. Giving and receiving commends, getting the alpha pack drops and maintaining their streaks, and just generally celebrating the positivities that Siege has to offer. We've also been monitoring the system and listening to your feedback, which is why the commendation system and reputation system were hooked together, now acting as one to provide guidance, to promote positivity, and to create a safe play space for all. In Year 8 Season 4, we're going to be activating the reputation system in a grace period. 
And what that means is you're going to see new UI in the Reputation Center, you're going to see increased notices in-game, and the first look at the impacts that will start to affect your account based on your reputation standing. And these impacts can be things such as changes to the rewards you get at the end of each match, it can be access to playlists, and it can be progress towards special drops and exclusive cosmetic bonuses. With the updated Reputation Center UI, you're going to see a lot of information all about how to get the best standings. You'll see information about how the system works, about each of the individual standings, and personalized information dedicated to you. You'll see things such as guides about how to spread positivity, about the individual impacts that will be affecting your account once we leave grace period, as well as tips and tricks you can use in your matches, throughout the game, and even beyond to become great Siege community members and great Siege players. As always, we'll be monitoring the system and listening to your feedback, and with everyone together, making the Rainbow Six Siege community as great as it can be. Next up is an explosive topic that's been cooking up for quite some time. Frag grenades. They're changing, and Associate Game Director Joshua Mills is here to tell you how and why. So the current state of frag grenades in Siege is that they're incredibly powerful. Basically, they are killing machines. You don't have time to react to them if they're cooked properly, and they can take out a decent amount of utility, and by decent, I mean all utility, depending on how they're being tossed, and they can take down soft destruction. What are we doing with the frags? We're removing the ability to cook the grenades. They're still as powerful as before as far as like the damage they can do and their killing potential, but it's more reactive for the defenders. So basically a grenade comes in, you have to make a decision. Do you move into more precarious position? But again, we are removing the ability to cook them. When you deploy them, they'll have a four second fuse timer on them. And then after bouncing off a surface, that fuse timer actually drops a little bit. This is very similar to how the flash grenades work currently. The biggest benefit to the change that we're trying to do with the frags is to allow operator diverse loadouts, which is, it's not the must pick. It is pick based on scenario and based on situation you're in. You can't just have the one pick option that is the option because there's no point for anything else to exist if that's the case. We want that and distributing. We want more operators to have them and have access to them and be able to play around with coming up with new ways to build out their loadouts. Going for it. This season, the Rainbow Six Siege team is looking for players to participate in the Siege Marketplace Beta. To tell us more about what that is and how to register for it, here's Business Strategy Director Mohamed Ben Hanada. We are happy to announce that we'll be launching a Marketplace on Siege. So for over eight years, we have released hundreds and thousands of skins on Rainbow Six Siege. This is a place where you'll be able to buy and sell skins between each other. We want to give you the possibility to actually sell the skins that you don't want anymore and to buy skins that you no longer can get from the store. You will be able to register for this marketplace beta through the QR code or the website link on the screen right now. This marketplace will be available on browser, through PC or mobile. All of the transactions will be made through Rainbow Six credits on this platform. We will be selecting players to give us feedback, test the feature before we fully launch it in year nine. Coordination, teamwork, and map knowledge are crucial in Siege. Easier said than done, of course, but two features coming this season will give you new ways to practice with your friends and sharpen your skills. Technical architect Alex Busby, creative director Alexander Karpazes, and associate game director Christopher Budgen have all the details. With Year 8 Season 4, we're introducing the Versus AI playlist. The first iteration of this playlist will allow our players to compete against Defender AI operators in Clubhouse in our bomb game mode. And these AI are a bit different from what our players are used to. They are engineered and designed to emulate how our players play the game. Some experienced players might even notice the AI using their favorite power positions or gadget strategies. At launch, the Versus AI playlist will have two difficulty levels. The first aimed at onboarding new players, so a bit more of a forgiving environment to help people learn and enjoy the mechanics of Siege. While the second is there to provide a more challenging environment for our elite players to warm up with. You will join a game, you will matchmake, you will have friends in your squad. The AI will be setting up the bomb site. they'll be putting gadgets in the same place as players do, and they will be defending it as fiercely as players do. In the coming seasons, we plan to release new operators available for the AI to choose from, new maps, 
and players will be able to play as the defending team against attacker AI. MapRun is a new learning tool we're bringing for players, which allows them to specifically learn maps. It will be focused on guiding players on how to navigate and how to learn callouts and how to communicate with your squad. With MapRun, we have two learning modes, the target drill and the landmark drill. Within the landmark drill, players will be given an image as well as some different information about that specific location. Once they find that landmark, they'll be able to interact with it and they'll be given a new one. In target drill, there'll be pre-placed dummies and commonly found enemy positions on the map. That way, you can get in with your squad and start to think about where do we clear the map? Where are enemies commonly found? Where do they like to hide? In the target drill, you can turn aggression on or off. So now the dummies will shoot back and you'll have to get into a good position while you clear the room. Map Run will launch with seven maps. This will include our new layer map as well as the revamped consulate map. Try learning layer through Map Run. This is the beginning of Map Run, and we really want to hear from you. What training tools do you want from an experienced player? What training tools do you want to bring your new friends into the game? All of this information will be great for us as we continue to build and evolve Map Run for the years to come. So you just saw a lot of exciting stuff when it comes to the AI playlist and all of the onboarding features that we're introducing this year. This does come to a difficult conversation when it comes to situations and training grounds in the game. We will be removing situations and training grounds, or as some others call it, tea hunt from the game. This is a very difficult decision for some very good reasons. We're introducing a lot of tools today that teach the player the game and allow them to warm up and it brings them closer to that true experience of our ranked game mode. Every single time that we change an operator, update a map, or change the balancing that affected T-Hunt, it meant that we diverted resources away from us making better and improved features in the game itself. But we are committed to the features of AI Playlist, the map run feature, which you just saw. And finally, we'll be bringing even more updates to the shooting range so that new players and experienced veterans will have what they need to experience Siege to the fullest. Quick question. Do you play Siege with a controller? Then I've got three words for you. Full controller remapping. And that's not all. Associate producer Jane Goncar from our Keith studio is here to share the good news. We are excited to announce that we are rolling out the first iteration of input customization for controllers. This will allow controller players to map up their own schematic, which is great since those bring benefits to players wishing to get an edge of their game and accessibility for players with special needs. We are also planning to bring several smaller features, like for example, the trigger the zone customization and stick the zone tweaken that comes as direct result of community requests. Stick that zones can now be set all the way down to zero. Just bear in mind that some devices might have drift issues depending on their make and condition. Another feature that players have been actively mentioning is improving the hip leaning input on controllers. Something we are glad to announce we have a solution coming later this season. When you take a look at the Operation Deep Freeze Battle Pass rewards this season, you'll notice a few helpful changes. Business Strategy Director Mohamed Benhanada is back to give us the scoop. I told you last season that we will be looking at improving the navigation on the Battle Pass. This season, we will be bringing the map that will be interactive. It's an easier way for you to actually see the overall Battle Pass and navigate through it. Can't wait to have your feedbacks on this, and it's only a first step to improve the navigation in the Battle Pass. So again, stay tuned for even more. It's time to learn more about the operator who gives Operation Deep Freeze its name. When you need to cool things down and put the attack on ice, you'll want Turborow on your team. 
Art director Joanna Choi is here for insights on the design of this operator. And then we'll go to director of gameplay design, Jeremy Carvalho, and game designer, Dominic Clement, for details on Turbo's chilling gadget. The idea came from visual inspirations like Portuguese uh, serving champions. So we suit him with a military grade diving gear, as well as a diving survival knife. And of course, we topped that off with the traditional DAE signature beret. We also gave him wide shoulders from swimming and we gave him a big wide smile to draw people in. But at the same time, he's very empathetic and he has kind eyes. So for Tuburao, we created this modern cryogenic canister, which contains liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen that are separated for security reasons. And when the canister is ready to get thrown, the two liquids are blended, creating this mixture that has strong cooling capacities. The canister has a glass that will break on impact, releasing this compound that will spread around and that will affect all the surfaces and all the objects that it gets in contact with. Yeah, diving deeper into Tobaro's ability, Tobaro bring the uh, Zotoganister. These things are throwable that will detonate on impact. And when they detonate, they will release a super cool compound that will freeze pretty much everything in its path. As an attacker, when you step into this effect, you're going to notice it. You're going to be slowed down. You'll also be leaving frozen footsteps. So these footsteps are visible on the surface you're walking on, but be careful because they're also visible on the surface below. The effect is not everlasting. It's only a few seconds. If you have any of your gadgets that are in the area of effect of the Zoto canister, they will be disabled or they will be paused. We realize that, well, with really cool temperature, your electronics go, go down. If you have enough ice, you can also affect mechanical gadget, like mechanical joints and stuff like that. So that was kind of like the eureka moment where we was like, it can also be affecting mechanical gadgets. So when you're facing a termite and you see the charge start to fuse, you have this moment of reaction where you can deploy your, your Zoto canister on the wall. You're going to be stopping the termite and its track. And now you're giving your team breathing room and sometimes to kind of think, okay, what's going to happen? What are we going to do with this? Because it's not going to destroy the termite charge. It's just going to freeze it and stop it for a second. The wall is still going to blow up at the end of the effect. The Barrow's role is one of a flex operator. This operator can both play as a roamer and as an anchor. As an anchor, Tobaro's role is really to kind of slow down a push so that the defender can really react to whatever the attacker are throwing at them. But as a roamer, you can do similar things, but do it at a further distance and be kind of safe from fuse or something like that and be able to, to switch between your roaming role where you disrupt the attack a bit further from the objective and be quickly running back to site and, and slow down whatever is happening uh, on the objective. With the introduction of RAM, uh, vertical play has been playing a, quite a big role. So with this gadget, you can use it to deploy on the ceiling and disrupt these attackers that are above you. Uh, you can also use it to uh, slow down the attackers, freeze them, disrupt them, or uh, also freeze other breaching shards that they may be placing on the ceiling. Frozen device. Of synergy, I would say, is the gadget denial. Uh, so you have uh, Bandit, Kaid, and Mute. Tobaro will be joining their rank and denying the wall for the attackers. You can pair this operator with, let's say, Bandit and give Bandit more time to replace his battery and uh, Bandit trick while the attackers are trying to breach. The second group, I would say, is the more the Intel group. Uh, you have Pulse and Solus. They provide a lot of information and a lot of Intel for Tobaro so he can deploy his gadget and hopefully catch the attackers that are playing upstairs or in the room next to you. The final group is I would call the trap operator. So you can think of Ella, Fenrir, or the other trap operators. These gadgets can be paired with the Zoto canister to really create some really disruptive and effective uh, traps for the attackers. Looking at the counters, the first one is Maverick. Because yes, despite having a fiery gadget, he's the only hard breacher who will still be able to go through a reinforcement wall that is affected by this uh, gadget. You can also bring an operator like Zofia because Zofia's explosive charge will not be affected by the Zoto canister. So you can use it to destroy the canister and get rid of the effect. You can also bring frag grenades, which will also not be affected by the Zoto canister. Finally, we also have operators like Twitch and Zero. Their gadget, equipped with their laser, will be able to zap the canister and get rid of the effect. 
if you just want to wait and be patient, you can just wait for the effect to run out. But if you're not patient and you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible, you can shoot it, you can melee it, you can use your sledge and sledge it. It will immediately remove the, the effect and the ice will melt. Taking a look at the primary weapons of Tabaro, we have two options. First one is the MPX, which is a classic weapon, one you can see on the Valkyrie. Um, it's a wonderful weapon for a flex operator. Your second option is the AR-15. Yes, a DMR on defense. This DMR creates a lot of destructions, and also the weapon is pretty loud, pretty powerful, so they'll, they'll, they'll be scared. Caught you. In terms of secondary weapon, you have one option, the P226 MK25. It's a reliable secondary weapon. So we wanted Tabaro to be able to really fulfill his role as a flex operator. So we gave him a balance of 2-2. Two, 2-help, two. Uh, two health, 2 speed. In terms of secondary gadgets, you have two options. The first option is the Nitro Cell, which is really useful when you play this operator in a vertical way. Uh, you can try to catch the attacker upstairs if you're able to catch them with your gadget, but be careful, don't throw your uh, Nitro Cell and your own gadgets because they will be disabled. So try to, try to play smart and try to anticipate where the players are gonna go if you do catch them. Your second option is the Proximity Alarm. This one is great to bring if you're more aiming towards using it as an horizontal gameplay. It allows you to put it in the doorway and have an early warning so you can deploy your Zoto canister in this doorway and make the attacker think twice before uh, swinging on you. you. This operator is super unique and the fact that it brings not only a disabling effect for electronic, but for the first time it brings a disabling effect for mechanical gadget. So it affects pretty much everything. At every moment of the round, you have something that you can contribute with your gadget, and there's something that you can do that will hopefully make your team win. You can play the season test server for Operation Deep Freeze starting tomorrow. Explore new strategies with his gadget and chill your opponents to the core. And remember, whether you're on the test server or just playing as usual, Reporting issues you encounter to R6Fix will give you the chance to earn some neat rewards. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more thing. Get ready to fight. Yeah, hey there, I do. Never fear loose. And when I get up in the game, you up here improve. Fast track, big lap, big facts. I'm past that. Yeah, I'm trying to get ahead, get out the way. Now move.